On the art scene. Understanding the power of our public art. I wasn't a muralist. Someone said, here's a free wall. You can do whatever you want to. I love the fact that I can just share something with everybody. It's in their city. It's, it's for them to not like or it's for them to like. Teaching Teens Theater Tech. We have an opportunity for multiple generations to work together as creative colleagues. My apprentice, uh, she has to run the board every night. It's really a big adult level responsibility to put in her hands. And creating a thriving community through dance. No matter what your affinity is or what kind of music you like, there's something for everyone here. Dance is the celebration. It's the celebration of all emotions, happiness, sorrow, anger, love. Join us as our team of performers and artists celebrate the people and places that create art in Central Virginia. Next on The Art Scene. Hi everyone, I'm Halia Roberts and welcome to The Art Scene. Each week on this show, our resident artists and I will take you inside the vibrant arts communities that surround us in Central Virginia. I'm here on the Canal Walk in downtown Richmond, where in 2012, over a dozen artists came together to bring life to this old power plant on the James River during the first ever RVA Street Festival. Creating murals like these takes a lot of imagination, a lot of patience, and a lot of paint something our own Noah Scalin knows a little about. Richmond is an incredibly vibrant arts community and I'm really glad to be a part of it. One of the most exciting things recently has been the rapid growth in public art. It's something that everyone can enjoy and frankly is really satisfying for artists to make as well. We recently talked with my friends Matt Lively and Hamilton Glass about the power of public art and the impact it's had on their careers. It's really awesome to see Richmond go through this um, this public art boom, um, especially as someone who's from a city who's already gone through that boom. I grew up in Philadelphia. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but that was like my art gallery. I mean, in Philly, you can't walk a block without seeing a mural. Um, and they were, they're very community driven. Um, the murals look like me. My uh, high school art teacher, he encouraged me to go to VCU. Uh, I decided to go into sculpture, and that way if I didn't end up being a professional artist, I could be a welder or carpenter. I learned about a wide variety of um, tools and uh, equipment and lots about materials. So when I got out of school, I was pretty pretty well equipped to do to do whatever. I, I went to architecture school at Hampton University. I graduated, um, practiced architecture for about seven years, hated every year of it, <laughs> and uh, um, the recession hit in 2009, and I had some time to kind of be me, and um, started uh, making art. Did more art in 2009 than I've ever done in my life. Um, and ran across some really good opportunities, was asked to do my first mural. Um, I did that mural and fell in love with the process. I wasn't a muralist. I wasn't known as an artist. Um, it was something that someone said, here's a free wall. You can do whatever you want to. It was uh, a politician holding a gun to his head. And so once I did that, uh, some people had some, compl <laughs> some complaints about it. It was the first time that I realized that people were consuming my art. And so that was the first time that I thought, hey, like this is, this is something. Um, and it also awoke in an accountability to the community in which these things live. The one that's my favorite right now is the one that's on the intersection of First and Broad, 
Um, and that was done with Girls for a Change. And not because of any aesthetic reason, it's because the girls kind of poured their heart and soul into the meaning of that. And they still congregate to that now. Well, the first thing that I noticed about painting murals is that w before I had any content on the wall, people that were walking by would, would say, good job. And uh, I don't get that here. Um, that it's just me and my own demons here in the studio. But out in the world, when you do a mural, everybody sees it even whether they want to or not. It's just there. So the images that I make don't have the same power that Hamilton might have been talking about, but they have um, a subtle power that it's not a specific message. It's just a general message of happiness and collaboration and uh, fun. I love the fact that I can just share something with everybody. Uh, they might not like it, and um, but, but that's okay because it's in their city. It's, it's for them to not like, or it's for them to like. I made uh, uh, about 600 of these little houses these little things with the magnets on the bottom. So I thought that I would stick these wherever around Richmond um, and uh, just for people to notice or be curious about and wonder why it's there. But, um, but they ended up being stolen. Um, people would call me and say, ah, I found one of your houses and uh, thanks. And I was like, well, why don't you put it back? But it, it was like their own gifts. and. Uh, Someone uh, contacted me and um, wanted to tell me that they had gotten one and gave it to their mom, and their, when their mom died, she was buried with it because she said that it made her feel, it made it feel like family or home. And uh, when I thought of it like that, it then occurred to me what, what all it might have meant. I just try to use the power of art in general. I. Um, have kind of been trying to be an example um, of a living, breathing black artist, uh, which sounds funny, but the reason I did not go into art was because I didn't have an example. And so um, I often do things in Richmond public schools. Um, and when I do those things, I, I make it a point to go to the art classes and talk and do things like that because I think it's important for for kids to see that you can be anything. The the water harvesting sculpture at Benford Middle uh, was was to me like a three dimensional mural, and I thought it was important to include the students because they go to that school, and I wanted them to be invested in it. So they all drew what they wanted to have happen over in that corner of the. Uh, middle school. One of the drawings was exactly like my original drawing, but it was it had cooler ideas in it than my drawings. Um, so we we used that one as the the basis to to make this uh, sculpture at the Benford Middle. Most people think that murals are this monumental thing because they're larger than life and things and that they stay forever, but they're, they're supposed to go away. Hamilton and I actually worked on one that was, it took longer for us to paint it than it actually stayed up. It was painted over uh, within a couple of weeks, but Hamilton wasn't upset at all. He, he just shrugged it off. Okay, it went down. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense, like it just leaves room for something else. And maybe the neighborhood has changed or the place has changed and that, that, should, that should happen. I, I just believe in that power of art. In general, it's really for people to experience and then, you know, move beyond the art. To see more public art and commissioned art from Hamilton and Matt, check out Facebook or Instagram. 
Hey everybody, I'm Roscoe B. And I wouldn't have become the poet and performer that I am without the mentors that guided me along the way. And here at Live Arts in Charlottesville, they are giving young people from all walks of life the opportunity to learn everything about theater from backstage to on stage. Take a look. Yeah, right, so just make sure you're really clear with everybody about work operations for that. So toe screws and frame the screws out over the community. One of the things that's really unique about community theater at Live Arts and other community theaters is that we have an opportunity for multiple generations to work together as creative colleagues. That's something we don't get a lot. There's always a power hierarchy, and there's something really special that comes from working with a teen or even younger and seeing them as creative equals and really feeding off of each other and, and collaborating together in a really meaningful way. And that's how you cheat a little bit when your blade isn't big enough. We try to provide opportunities here that kids won't get through their school programming so that we really can give a lot of extra value. For the mentor apprentice shows, we pair each adult on the production staff with a teen apprentice. So the set designer has a set apprentice. The lighting designer has a lighting apprentice. My name is Isaac Truman Nashville Russell, and I go to Charlottesville High School. And I am the apprentice technical designer for Curious Incident with the Dog at Nighttime. I got that far. I think well, I started in theater um, when I was five years old, so I've been involved in theater for more than 30 years now. And specifically technical direction, and specifically technical direction at Live Arts enables me to, um, to teach, and it enables me to sort of uplift the people around me and to spread skill sets. Their life skills, you know, learning how to use a power tool is something you take with you, obviously, outside of theater. This is actually the first time they've ever done a technical designer apprenticeship, but my duties were to just work on the set and learn skills and kind of manage in set, lights, sound. Um, we work mostly with set, um, build in the whole kind of Tetris idea. We worked with the set designer and his apprentice. Jeremy's a very nice guy. He's just a very fun guy to work with, you know? He's very jokey, you know? I think we have a good relationship, but he, he can be very professional, you know, and he can know when to bar that line between professionalism and just having fun, you know, and I think he's a great teacher. When Isaac first came in, he's very soft-spoken, and over the course of our process together, it's been really nice to see him go from a really kind of quiet kid to somebody who's who's you know out there working with us and he's trading barbs with the rest of us and he's teasing me and he's right there with me asking questions and working and um and i hope he's learning as well do you know your father's phone number christopher i love theater because i love uh talking to people and i love meeting new people and getting involved in the community and theater has always been an accepting environment for just anyone i am ella anthony i am a sophomore at monticello high school and i am the apprentice sound designer i love music i play a lot of instruments and i love just music in general so uh doing sound makes me just feel like there's a place for me at theater this show, we started very early. We started in November. Sound designer means that you are trying to help tell the story through sound. Depending on the show, that might just be a couple of music cues or an effect to make thunder or lightning or something like that. On this particular show, the show has almost 60 scenes that um, quickly change time and place. So the goal is to help orient the audience through sound and through other technical means to where they are so that they will never feel confused about their place. Did you mean to hit the policeman? Yes. <laughs> but you didn't mean to. I'm Kai Landers. I'm a sophomore at Monticello High School, and I'm a lighting design apprentice. When we're getting things sorted out, it's all about production meetings, planning out lighting specifically for this, you know, like what kind of relationship it'll have with set, uh, with sound. My relationship. Is, it's been a very open relationship. Um, 
especially because I came to it without having ever done something like this before. Um, so he was very open and just wanted to learn anything that I had to, to offer. It's a learning experience. It helps you develop as a person. And it starts off being kind of stressful, of course, but then you find yourself in a groove of it all. Uh, once the production meetings are over, then it's opening night. I'm out of the picture now, but my apprentice, uh, she has to run the board every night, which means that uh, she has to be totally keyed in and focused on hitting all 140 of those cues. It's really a big adult level responsibility to put in uh, her hands. Kai has taken all of the notes that I've given um, and has asked the right questions and he's been amazing during the run of the show. It's a lot of hard work. They do come and do a lot of hard work, but there's a little opportunity here and there for fun. Um, and they certainly, I see friendships being made and maintained over the years and it's just really, uh, it really warms my heart. Did you kill the dog? Have the dogs killed the dog? We found that it is wrong to lie to a policeman and that you can get into a very, very... I made the choice to come here. Um, and it's, it's because of the way live arts engages with its community. It's very direct. With every show, what we keep talking about is what what is the reason for this show? How does it speak to our community? What voices is it reflecting in our community? And how does it serve both our volunteer base and our audience base? Our, our mission and our goal very actively is to create inclusive and accessible work. That's what we're actively striving for is, is to create that space um, for everyone to feel really safe to expand and to experiment and to fail um, because if we don't mess up and we don't fail, then we're not learning. And now, enjoy our reception of the great incident of the dog of time If you want to learn more about their mentor or apprentice program, classes, or live theater events happening at Live Arts, check out their website or follow them on social media. Hi, I'm Bianca Bryan, and I've been a performer for over 20 years, mostly a singer and an actor, and dance, I would say, is not my specialty. But here at Dogtown Dance, they apparently have something for everybody. So let's give it a whirl. Dance is the celebration. It's the celebration of all emotions, happiness, sorrow, anger, love, and there are people that don't have words. And that's actually why I began dance myself. My name is Rob Petrus, and I'm the founder of Dogtown Dance Theater. One and, do it me, one and two. The space was intended to fill a gap. And there's a lot of artists that graduate from VCU and a lot of artists that don't have anything to do with them that are here in Richmond, but they have no space. The space was a gymnasium that served a high school and a middle school. And then we had to redo virtually everything inside of it. The local artists started to show and eventually one of those artists is the executive director that I hired to replace myself. I am Jess Burgess. I'm the artistic and executive director here at Dogtown Dance Theater located in Manchester, Richmond. And Dogtown's mission is to provide a home and the resources for independent artists so that they can succeed and thrive. When we first opened in 2010, um, we were home to about maybe 7 to 15 different artists. We've grown tremendously since then, and um, now here in 2019, we serve over 350 different artists. We don't operate like a traditional dance studio or dance school, if you will. Um, Dogtown does not collect tuition from any students that come in through our doors. What we do is offer subsidized space for dance artists to host classes, workshops, et cetera. And then they can in turn determine their own fate in terms of 
what is their price points that they want to charge students, you know, how many classes a week do they want to offer, etc. When we first opened in 2010, um, we were home to about maybe 7 to 15 different artists. We've grown tremendously since then and um, now here in 2019 we serve over 350 different artists. You know, traditional dance such as ballet, modern, but then we also have cultural dance, African, flamenco, salsa, Filipino. Um, we also have a very robust hip hop um, program here. One of our largest success stories in terms of an artist coming in brand new to the organization and really taking off is Richmond Urban Dance. My name is Christina Cooper. I am the assistant director of Richmond Urban Dance. Um, and we are a street style only dance organization. Um, we focus on all ages and all skill levels. They started as a completely street dance organization. They were out rehearsing and having classes literally in, you know, in parks and in the streets and in, you know, empty parking lots. We reached this point of growth where we had so many people come into class, we couldn't fit everybody. So we found Dogtown. That's been fantastic for our growth. Um, we can hold multiple classes, uh, like on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So that's been fantastic. Push it forward. Now take your right hand and then both knees and dip. Dip, dip. Now artists, a lot of time, and especially dance artists, performing artists, are focusing on their technique. They're focusing on their performing skills, on um, you know their pedagogy, on choreography. Very rarely are artists concerned with the the entrepreneurial side or the business aspect of being a successful artist, and so. Our major program is called the Artist Resource Program, and what that program does, it's year-round, and it provides support in marketing and PR and helping just build awareness for their classes, their performances, their programs. It can also include technical support for self-production in the main stage theater, so it really does spread a lot um, of, of different skill sets that we're trying to help artists develop and create. Because ultimately, the end goal is that these artists in Richmond become sustainable on their own and make a more thriving artistic community. So you're here, you're here, you hold it for half a second. Put it down just like this, come back up to here. Dance is this universal language. Um, so we've had some success stories with our kids. So for the younger kids, let's say someone's getting bullied or someone's having a hard time fitting in and kind of finding that group. They have found that group with us. Um, very inclusive, very supportive. Then with adults, it's the same thing. We still have that yearning for belongingness and we want to try new things. Um, and we're not there to be professional dancers, we just want to have fun. Dance is a really unique and fundamental component. It teaches creativity, it cre teaches team building, um, you know, working with, you know, others and discipline. A big part of Richmond Urban Dance is offering our students scholarships if they're needed. So financial base, we offer partial and full assistance. Um, we want to make sure we're giving kids and adults the opportunity um, to come to class even if their current financial situation does not afford them that. Um, so that's a big part of what we do. So the more we grow, the more scholarships we can offer. Over 80% of her students are on scholarship. And that to me is, is, is is what it's all about. Art is something that needs to be consumed by society and I think by being a nonprofit it allows us to really serve the artists and the audiences that we that we do serve in a unique way based on the fact that every dollar that comes in through through our doors um, be it through the artist resource program, grant funding or donors those dollars are going right back into the artist to make sure that they get the resources they need to be successful. There's too much talent that leaves Richmond because there aren't places for them to work. And that's what it was all about, creating that space. Dogtown is, you know, trying to build a sense of this, this community within artists so that we can work together, we can collaborate, we can produce work, we can, we can share work, we can share space 
to ultimately just make the community a, a, a better place to live, a better place to grow up, a, a, you know, a place that, that folks want to come to. To learn more about the events and classes that Dogtown hosts, go to their website for details. They're available for all ages, and the best part, some of them are free. If you have an event or story idea you'd like to see on the art scene, connect with us on social media or send us an email. Thanks for watching. Join us next time for more stories about the amazing art in your area. And remember, whether you see it, hear it, or make it, it's a part of the art scene.